next steps desk and find out how you can serve, how you can plug in, how you can connect, how you can be a part of our church body. All right, let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Most gracious God, most generous God.
There is no greater master than Jesus. Let's stand to our feet and sing together of the price that Christ paid for us, not that we would be slaves and miserable, but that we would be under a master who loves us, who purchased us with his own blood, so that we would be with him forever.
Good morning. Welcome to Hebrew Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Sean, and I'm so glad that you are all here this morning as we, we come and sit under Christ and his word to proclaim his great name. We are glad that you're here this morning. Turn in your copy of God's word or your device to Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. Forgot to look in the Pew Bible this morning, so if somebody wants to tell me what that is, I'll shout it out. It's probably, or, say again? 21. 21. So if you want to use the Pew Bible in front of you, uh, you can follow along in the same translation that I am reading from. For those of you who are guests with us this morning or maybe been out for a little bit, we are still in the book of Genesis. We're re reading through Genesis this year, uh, here in 2024, and we're just slowly walking through. Uh, we're really digging into the life of Jacob over the next few weeks, and, and we've seen what a messy life uh, that he is living in. And sometimes he's falling, and sometimes he's faithful, and today we're going to see how all of this together and the deception for the birthright that we see that God is still sovereign. If you're a guest today, we again want to welcome you. If you want to do a connect card, you can do it at the Next Steps desk, or there's other ways you can do that also. You can scan the QR code that's in the pew in front of you. Uh, you can do that there electronically if that's easier, or in the uh, on our app. If you want to download our app, you can download that and do that in there as well. But let's look and focus at Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. Now I'm warning you ahead of time. We're reading a lot of this. I look to try to see how we can shorten it. We just can't. This is just too good. God's word is perfect, and we need to hear all of it. So we're going to go through verse 40 today. Uh, so strap in. This is a good one. So let's go together, okay? Genesis chapter 27. When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could not see, he called his older son Esau and said to him, My son. And he answered, Here I am. He said, look, I am old and do not know the day of my death, so now take your hunting gear, your quiver and bow, and go out to the field to hunt some game for me. Then make me a delicious meal that I love and bring it to me to eat so that I can bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening to what Isaac said to his son Esau. While, so while Esau went to the field to hunt some game to bring in, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, listen, I heard your father talking to your brother Esau. He said, Bring me game and my delicious meal for me to eat so that I can bless you in the Lord's presence before I die. Now, my son, listen to me and do what I tell you. Go to the flock and bring me two choice young goats, and I will make them into a delicious meal for your father, the kind he loves. Then take it to your father to eat so that he may bless you before he dies. Jacob answered Rebekah, his mother, Look, my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I am a man with smooth skin. Suppose my father touches me, and then I will be revealed to him as a deceiver and bring curse rather than blessing on myself. His mother said to him, Your curse be on me, my son. Just obey me and go get them for me. So he went and got the goats and brought them to his mother, and he, his mother made the delicious food his father loved. Then Rebekah took the best clothes of her older son Esau, which were in the house, and had her younger son, Jacob, wear them. She put the skins of the young goats on his hands and the smooth part of his neck. And then she handed the delicious food and bread she had made to her son, Jacob. When he came to his father, he said, My father? And he answered, Here I am. Who are you, my son? And Jacob replied to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please set up and eat some of the game so that you may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, how did you ever find it so quickly, my son? He replied, because the Lord, your God, made it happen for me. Then Isaac said to Jacob, please come closer so that I can touch you, my son. Are you really my son Esau or not? So Jacob came closer to his father Isaac. He touched him and, his, and said, the voice is the voice of Jacob. The hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau. So he blessed him. Again, he asked, are you really my son Esau? And he replied, I am. Then he said, bring it closer to me and let me eat some of my son's game so that I can bless you. Jacob brought it closer to him and he ate and he brought him wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, please come closer and kiss me, my son. 
So he came closer and kissed him. When Isaac smelled his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you from the dew of the sky and the richness of the land an ab abundance of grain and new wine. May people serve you and nations bow and worship you. Be master over your relatives. May your mother's sons bow and worship to you. Those who curse you will be cursed, and those who bless you will be blessed. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had left the presence of the father Isaac, his son Esau arrived from his hunting. He had also made some delicious food and brought it out to his father. He said to his father, let my father get up and eat some of his son's game so that you may bless me. But his father Isaac said to him, who are you? He answered, I am Esau, your firstborn son. Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably. Who was it then, he said, who hunted and brought it to me? I ate it all before you came in, and I blessed him. Indeed, he will be blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he cried out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me too, my father. And he replied, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. So he said, Isn't he rightfully named ja Jacob? For he has cheated me twice now. He took my birthright, and now, look, he has taken my blessing. Then he said, haven't you saved a blessing for me? But Isaac answered Esau, Look, I have made him a master over you, have given him all that his relatives and servants, and have sustained him with grain and new wine. What then can I do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. And Esau wept loudly. His father Isaac answered him, Look, your dwelling place will be away from the richness of the land, away from the dew of the sky above. You will live by your sword, and you will serve your brother. But when you rebel, you will break his yoke from your neck. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, and God, how it teaches you, not only of the dangers of, of sin, but of the power of grace. And Father, I... I pray that today we would be brought afresh anew of your word, that your word would work its safe way into our hearts, that it would show us Christ, not only in the text, but show us how we might be more like Christ. We pray today that the reading of the word, the preaching of the word, would form your church that your word would not return void, but we would all be made more holy because of it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you've seen in movies and TVs the bitter deceit or fighting or infighting of families. Uh, families that maybe even in the news or maybe from their reputation seem successful, well, rich even, uh, yet what you learn or you see or you know that it's anything but on in private, that there's infighting and backbiting and, and, and conniving and scheming. If you've watched media over the last several decades, you might could even bring up a, a, a famous family uh, just like that, uh, off the top of your head, depending upon the era in which you were born or watched TV, maybe you would bring up the Ewings of Dallas, and you would think about all the conniving that happened in that family. Some of you don't even know who that is. Or many of you, maybe if you're younger, maybe you're millennial or, or younger, that the first thing that topped, uh, popped out of your popped into your mind is the Kardashians of Calabasas. Maybe you, you thought of that as a family. Or maybe, unfortunately, you know that because of your own personal experience of families who want to blame each other for the wrong, the things that are going bad. Uh, it's, it's either A, B, C, or D. It's their fault, or your fault, or their fault, or probably letter E, all of the above. The reality is we see a picture of 
something like this in the scripture this morning. That Isaac and Rebekah, though they had put their faith in the promise and the covenant, their family was messy. And the internal strife that they had allowed go on, the favoritism of Esau by Isaac and the favoritism of Jacob by Rebekah had been sown for decades. That it had continued on, and we see earlier, a few weeks ago, that Jacob had, uh, had stolen the birthright from Esau, uh, which means the, the more plentiful or bountiful riches of inheritance over a meal. And now it went even further for the blessing to come from Isaac to his son that would continue the leadership and the covenant of God. But even in this sordid scene, we see this wonderful, beautiful message of hope. Who was the fault? Everyone. Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, Esau, everyone had a part to play. But even in this, there is a message of hope that God's purposes for man will ultimately stand and they cannot be frustrated by human failures. This is a tremendously important biblical principle that your sin, even when it is real and lasting, cannot derail God's gracious purpose for your life. There is an immense, wonderful gift of grace that even as believers, when we willingly sin, sin and omission, and sin in many other ways, we can be assured that God's purpose and plan will not be stopped, and we will be continued to be loved. Maybe you need to hear that this morning. Maybe you've been carrying guilt and shame. Maybe you've been carrying a feeling that your future is ruined. Good news! You cannot thwart God's love and plan for your life. Do you continue on in the sin? No, Romans would say, Paul would say, may it never be. But in you, the forgiveness that you seek from God, you will be made whole. And you will not thwart the purposes of God for your life. So this passage, there are three reasons for hope knowing that God will continue to fulfill his purposes for your life. And you can say this, that when my life is messy, even when I sin, I cannot stop God's purposes for my life. So let's do this. If you're taking notes uh, in, on your phone or on the bulletin number one, your fighting against God's word will not stop God's plan. Your fighting against God's word will not stop God's plan. When we disobey or intentionally ignore God's word, thankfully, he is gracious enough to continue his plan for our life. You see, often in our lives, we play by our own rules. Often in times, we ignore God's word. Often in times, we disobey God's commands, but... By God's grace, he continues his purpose and plan. And we see this exactly what is happening in this family today. Let us just look at just the examples of, of Isaac and Rebekah at the beginning of the story. Both of them loved God, but both of them disobeyed God's word. We, we see the scene as Isaac is growing older, he's nearly blind that he wanted to pass on the blessing. It is different from the inheritance that was stolen earlier, meaning that, that when, uh, uh, in those days when the patriarch died, that the, the oldest son would receive the majority, maybe even 75% of the inheritance of land, riches, servants, uh, everything that his father owed, the son would inherit. Uh, the, the oldest son would inherit the rest. And then the, le the rest behind would be divvied up by the rest of the sons. Well, 
That was stolen first. Now, Isaac wants to give the blessing. This was something done in those days. A blessing that would be a, a blessing of the father to the eldest son to leave and have his blessing. As a blessing of God uh, upon the person. And he says in verse 3 and 4 that he, he called Esau to come get that blessing. Verse 3 and 4, I want to bless you before I before you die now before I die now we know from the last few chapters that uh, that Isaac favored Esau and all along he wanted God's plan to be on the son he favored not on the one that God favored now let's remember this that there was an important plan that was given by God when Rebecca and I, Rebecca went to God and said, why are these twins in my belly fighting one another? This is more than just kicking. There is WWE going on in the middle of my belly. I need to figure out why this has happened. I felt like there was an elbow drop just now. And what is happening? And God answered the question in Genesis chapter 25, verse 23. He said, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples will come from you and be separated. One people will be the stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Now, the older, by just five minutes, if you remember, is Esau, and Jacob is holding on to his ankle, the ankle grabber and the deceiver. And so Esau was to be, in the world's eyes and man's eyes, the one who carried the promise, and even as we see in Isaac's eyes. But Isaac was willing to ignore God's word and desires of his wife and the elect son of God to go about his own plan. He ignored everything that God had said, prophesied, told, and instead Isaac disobeyed. He was working all the while to set up his favorite son Esau with the inheritance and now with the blessing. And as soon as Esau departed, this was not the end of the story. Isaac not only disobeyed God's word, but Rebekah went into high gear and doubling down the first sin, going into another sin. She began to lie and scheme and be deceitful. She was no longer being submissive to her husband, and she certainly was doing everything against God's way for his people. We know that lying is a sin from hell, and Rebecca was willing to do whatever it takes to get her favorite son the blessing. Now, we know Rebecca was using it based on the promise of God. Oh, she heard, her ears perked up, and let us remember, moms don't forget, mom remembered that God said the, the younger will serve, well, sorry, the older will serve the younger. So she remembered her favorite son was to be the one of a blessing. And instead of allowing God to do what God does, she wanted to help God. And that was the the biggest mistake of all that 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 Rebecca and Jacob thought thought that God needed their help but also isn't this the way that we even sometimes as Christians as certainly the world sees things that the ends justify the means or maybe as Christians that it's okay to break a few of God's lesser laws to fulfill a greater one. Friends, this is one of Satan's favorite shortcuts. He comes to you and suggests that God's promises are taking too long to work out. So maybe you should give him a little help. Never mind that what you're about to do goes against God's word and that is a sin. Instead, do what you think is right. Boy, friends, so many, uh, as a pastor, I deal with so many times in counseling that people are saying, well, I, I, surely God wants me to divorce my spouse because there's no other option. Surely, God, it's okay for me to sleep with my fiance because 
uh, because we need to get to know each other. And, and never mind, we want to have a life that's fulfilled. We never want to get divorced. So it's okay if we live together now. Friends, these are things that God's word is clear about. And yet, we think that there is some hierarchy that we can break little sins to maybe move along God's path. But there are no less important laws to God. And they cannot be broken in order to bring about good ends. Uh, Griffith Thomas, a commentator, commented or wrote, Righteousness can never be laid aside even though our object is yet more righteous. In personal life, in home life, in church life, in endeavors to win men for Christ, in missionary enterprise, in social improvement, and in everything connected with the welfare of humanity, we must insist upon the absolute righteousness, purity, and truth in our methods, or else we shall bring utter discredit to the cause of our Master and Lord. Friends, we need to be reminded that when we behave and we say we are Jesus' kids, or that he is King Jesus. We reflect King Jesus in what we do and say. So the solution to one person's sin can never be another sin. But here's the good news. God will take care of his purposes. Even if you fail, God will continue according to his promises and his purposes. Meanwhile, our responsibility is to be faithful in our use of the means he has ordained. We can trust God's word and allow God to work so that we can say with confidence that when my life is messy and even when I sin, it cannot stop God's purposes for my life. Number two, your manipulation of life will not stop God's plan. Your manipulation of God's life will not stop God's plan. And the next scene of our story, so to speak, we see that, that Jacob began to manipulate his father. We should not manipulate others in our lives towards our desired outcome. We need to be reminded that God's plan for us may take us down roads that we don't want to go, but we cannot manipulate or even sin to get what we might think God considers as good. We have seen the blame to Isaac and Rebekah, but now we can't see any other party right now than Jacob. Jacob knew what his mother was doing was wrong. And we know that even some commentators say that when this was going on, Jacob was in his 70s, so we can't say this was inexperience or youthfulness. Yes, his mother told him what to do, but he knew what was wrong. And the whole plan depended upon Jacob playing his role. I mean, he, he's the one that played dress up. He's the one that distorted his voice or whatever he did, it, even though his father said, your voice kind of sounds like Jacob, but you're, you look, you feel like Esau. There, there's something here that we know depends on Jacob. Now, we know from this Genesis that, God, that Jacob was de devoted to God's plan and devoted to God's ways, even by faith. Yet, we see his penchant for deceitfulness and lying. I mean, he is known as the, the deceiver, the grabber, the one. And he's already done it before. And this very repetition of pattern of sin continues in Jacob's life. And though we see this happen, and though God blesses all the still, we see the consequence of this happening for the rest of his life. In the next few weeks, we're going to see the pattern of deceitfulness, not only by Jacob, but it comes back on him. And here he deceives his father. He, he puts the, the, the sheepskin on his arms and on his neck that he wears Esau's clothes, but I believe it's stunning that, that the ultimate kind of end in verses 26 to 27, Isaac says, come here so that I can kiss you. Come near and kiss me. 
my son. And Jacob, very akin to the way that Judas betrays Jesus with a kiss, he kisses his father. In this, we see the depths and the willingness for him to go to betray his father. He receives the blessing. But in this, we see that the key to this blessing is the big difference was not that Jacob was a righteous man and Esau wasn't. We ask and we wonder why God is God. He's sovereign. He knows what's happening here that surely God did not get tricked. Well, friends, that was God's plan to begin with. Remember that this happened not just because God watched to see which son would be better. He didn't see who would grow up to be the more faithful son or the perfect son. Instead, it was the grace of God that made the difference between Jacob and Esau. And friends, this, we should never forget this. That if we, if we ever get to a place in our life that we can't understand why God would choose us or that our sin would be too great, we need to keep going back to the wonderful miracle of our salvation in God. That God took us who was dead in our sins. We were, we were dead people, Ephesians says. And yet we've been made alive by Christ. This is a miracle in each one of our hearts and minds that God has come into us, saved us, that by faith we have called out on Christ. But here is this picture again of God's electing purposes in, in Isaac and sorry, in Jacob and Esau's life, that this covenant of grace came upon Jacob, not because Jacob was good, because God had a plan. This is reiterated, not just here in Genesis, but in Romans chapter 9, verse 11 through 13. For though her sons, this is Rebecca, had not been born yet, nor done anything good or bad, so that God's purpose, according to his election, might stand, not from works, but from the one who calls. She was told the older will serve the younger, as it is written, I have loved Jacob but I have hated Esau. Friends, God's purposes was for the covenant to come to Jacob. God's protection would go with Jacob. In verse 29, there was this line, curse be everyone who curses you and bless be everyone who blesses you. This is not just a son giving this over to, a father giving it over to a son. This was God who's almighty giving the covenant blessing to the line who would bring about the savior of the world. And what had been promised to him all along, he and not his brother would be heir to the covenant of grace. And we know this came true. Luke chapter 1, verse 33. He will reign, this is Jesus, will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. As you can see, God bestowed the covenant on Jacob not because he was perfect, both he and Esau were sinners. And we saw the denied promise of the covenant to Esau, but Jacob deceived and received it. And so this gives us this beautiful picture of salvation in Christ and a benefit that encourages us in our assurance of our salvation. Whenever we feel that we are not worthy or loved, we can look at the covenant of grace that has come to us. That God and his goodness chose us before the foundation of the world. That despite our failures, despite our sin, God loved us and will love us forever, brother and sister. That there is nothing that can snatch us out of his hand. And God's electing purpose, he chose us for salvation that gives us encouragement that God will always love you. Now, a couple weeks ago, when we were leaving, talking about Jacob and Esau, this is the conversation in the car on the ride home. We said, you know, someone in my car said, boy, it's really hard to hear that God loved 
Jacob and hated Esau. It, it's really hard to wrap our mind around that there would be a plan of grace for one and not the other. It's hard for us considering this and wondering sometimes how is it that we have by faith come to know Christ and someone that we know. Here are twins, same DNA, same womb, everything, but God in his grace chose one and not the other. How do we answer this? Well, brothers and sisters, this is the way I answered by, by God's grace in the car that day. This is how we should look at it. It is not to be in wonder that God chose one over the other. But it should bring us praise and glory that God chose any son at all. If it was not for the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, we would all be Esau's. But by his grace, we are Jacob's. That we are loved. And that we will be eternally his sons and daughters forever in heaven. Friends, that should blow our minds and reveal to us the love that God has given us. That Jesus Christ died on the cross, going to the grave. That he took the wrath that we owed God. Our sins deserved. Jesus took it. He went to the grave and three days later he rose again. So that the covenant would come to us by faith that we could receive this covenant from God. Hallelujah! It is not by our goodness or our badness or any other thing. It is by what is won by the cross of Jesus. And it is our faith that we receive this wonderful grace. Today, if you have not trusted in Jesus Christ, you are not here by accident. You didn't flip through Facebook or you didn't turn on YouTube and didn't turn into this message by happenstance or accident, by God's sovereign plan. He has ordained for you to hear the gospel that Jesus died for you and by faith you can be born again today. Maybe you came by, by an invite from a friend or maybe because you just knew this was the thing for you to do today. Hear this. This is not by happenstance. Today can be the day of your salvation. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus, today you can be his and you will be woven in the covenant of Jacob. And the same king who will reign in the house of Jacob forever will be your king forever. We know that we see in this that when my life is messy, I cannot stop God's purposes for my life. If you trust in Jesus today, that could be what you can say, but then also that we can know that no matter what happens, God has sealed us with the Spirit and we will be forever His. Third and finally, your disregarding God's word will not stop God's plan for you. Your disregarding God's plan will, sorry, God's word will not stop God's plans for you. In the last scene, we see Esau come in and he wants a blessing, but he finds out it's already passed to his brother. But the warning of Esau is that we cannot ignore God's truth for our lives without consequence. You may be here today, or you may know someone who is avoiding God's truth for their life. Friends, we cannot buy into the ethos of the world, that, that lie of Satan, that Christianity, the Bible, and Jesus is just for religious folks. Or that at the end of our life, everything's just going to work out. Friends, the biggest sowing seed of deceit is that Satan wants the world to believe that the other end of their life, that we're all going to be precious moments, chubby angels one day. That, that everything's going to work out somehow. That anybody, no matter who it is, whether they've accepted Christ or they've rejected Christ, they all have the same ends. Well, brothers and sisters, we can't read the word today and we... 
and, and support that. That is not what the message is. The message of the Bible is, is that we are all speeding down a path away from God towards hell. Yet, by God's grace, he comes and rescues some of us. And the reality is that Esau saw and he knew the promise. But he was willing to give the birthright up for a meal. And yes, he was tricked out of the promise. But in his life, God had a plan. Verse 33, it was, I think it's interesting that when Isaac realized that he had given the, the blessing to the wrong son, it said Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably. Some might read that as saying, oh, he's, he's very upset. But I think it's, he knew that God was onto it. He realized that no matter what he did, God's plan was going and was defeated by his sovereignty. Esau, the, the Esau sought a further blessing, but what we see is, is there was no blessing left to give. And look at what this was. He said that you will be away from the richness of the land and the dew from the sky above. It is meaning, it's saying there that anything that you might get from the promised land, but the dew or the blessing of God will be far from you. Esau saw that the promise of the covenant and was willing to give it away. But the warning for us is that if we do not regard God's plan, there is consequence for us. There is a plan. There is a message. There is the gospel hope. And we cannot continue to reject it or ignore it. But when we disregard God's word, that will not stop God's plan. Esau received the wicked fruits of his selling his birthright, of rejecting God's promise and of the covenant. He received that when he did not believe God's covenant as his, son, as his uh, dad would tell him. He was willing to just give it away. But instead, we see that his deceitfulness in Jacob's life continued the rest of his life. Friends, this should warn us that when we ignore or disregard God's word, we still receive consequence. It, Jacob received the consequence of deceitfulness that we'll read about in the next weeks when he had to keep working for his spouse. But as a reminder to us that we should allow the gospel to free us from deceitfulness and hold true to the word of God. Ian Duguid, an Old Testament scholar, wrote, the fact that sin will not get you what you really want in life is not nearly a powerful enough defense to guard you against the attractiveness of Satan's lies and the fake fickleness of your own heart. Only a deep grasp of the gospel has the power to bring about the deep change in your heart it is knowing the terrible price that has already been paid for your sin that enables you to say no to sin. Brothers and sisters, the plan of God in Jesus Christ gives us the power to walk away from the sin and trust and obey God's word. We cannot continue going down a path in which that we continue to reject God's word. The Bible is clear. Here's what's even better about God's grace. It's the same gospel that calls us to obey. Also, is the gospel that covers us to forgive. A deep grasp of the gospel knows that when every time we sin, that we can go to God and receive lavish forgiveness. If you continually go to the cross of Jesus, you will seek the love of Christ stretched out to you a sinner in the midst of your sin that you are no longer having to ask who's at blame but instead that you know that the one who died for you carries the blame for you and at the cross there's grace sufficient to cover your sin no matter who you are praise God in Christ we have received freedom from the power of sin 
and freedom from condemnation of sin. So that when you say my life is messy, even when I sin, it cannot stop God's purposes for my life. Friends, this story was real life. Everyone in it sinned. No one looked good. Not Isaac, Rebecca, or Jacob, or Esau. The patriarch fought against God's word. The matriarch, through her favorite son, attempted to manipulate life. She and Jacob thought that God needed help, even if the help was dishonest and self-serving. Esau, the patriarch's favorite son, disregarded God's word. Indeed, he despised the promise. Everyone sought the blessing of God without bending the knee to God. And this little family was taught that it was fraught with ambition, jealousy, envy, lying, deceit, coveting, malice, manipulation, stubbornness, and most importantly, stupidity. But in and above this, something of immense beauty and grandeur happened. God kept his word. He was faithful even when they weren't. And God fulfilled his word despite Isaac's opposition, despite Rebekah and Jacob's manipulation, despite Esau's indifference. And friends, it should teach us all a wonderful lesson of the grace of God. That even when my life is messy, even when I sin, it cannot stop God's purposes for my life. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this reminder of your grace and goodness. And Father, I pray that as your children, that we will run from even the hint of sin. That we will not disregard your word. But God, I pray that thanks be to you and your son Jesus, that we can come to you for forgiveness that we can find that our sins have been paid for. That through Jesus Christ, there is life. And life and the blessing that extends forever. Heavenly Father, I, I pray that someone here today, or maybe watching online, would trust in your son, Jesus. That by faith, they would become recipients of grace just like Jacob that they would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Alex Brito and with Jeff Law, uh, we co-lead Mosaic Multicultural Church in, in London in an area called Elephant and Castle. We would love to share with you how we've seen God at work in our area over the past few years and listening to some of our members is the best way. Let me introduce you to some of them. As Mesa Global Workers sent by Eternal Church in Fort Mill, South Carolina, and through the partnership with AT3 and in relationship with Co-Mission Church Planning Network, we've been able to come as devoted co-workers and servant leaders with Mosaic Multicultural Church. Our hope continues to be to increase capacity for leadership here at Mosaic so that they can reach the city of London. Through the apprenticeship, we've grown in our obedience and intimacy with Christ. We understand now more than ever the importance of partnership with the local UK church. We have many engagement opportunities, including the International Cafe, which we warmly invite people into the community here in Elephant but even more importantly, for the Hi, I'm Alana. Hi, I'm Rachel. Hi, uh, we pay very serious welcomes, and I'm out now to welcome people to church and help women as well. I'm, um, yeah, so I am um, part of the team where we go out on Susie. It's great to see other people because of the um, we help people at the wonderful new type of music. Hi, I'm John. And I'm Lexi. And we've been part of the day since 2016. Uh, we've also been part of the church plan in 2018. As well as being part of the ministry now, I'm host of the program for the church. And I'm the leader of the ministry. We also have had a weekend for some very well serving in the ministry. And we also have to spend the afternoon. to all who have partnered with us at Mosaic in prayer and financial support so far. We praise God for all He has done for us and among us. But there is much more work to be done in order to see people transformed by the power of the gospel here. Please pray for us. And if you'd like to support us financially or to receive our newsletters, uh, please email us at contact at mosaicmulticulturalchurch.org or scan the QR code on your screen. May God bless you. It's a great video of one of our partners over in London, Alex Brito and Mosaic Multicultural Church. So we're thankful for their reaching out to the multicultural community there in Elephant and Castle. And uh, we do, uh, they're one of our partners. So if you're thinking and looking at being on mission, your next step is on mission. Talk to Pastor Mark about next year and how we might support them. We continue to pray for them and what God is doing. Again, we again welcome our guests. We hope that you connect with us through the Connect card. If you didn't have time to do it electronically, there is a paper copy that is out the double doors to the immediate left. If it's your first time here with us today, Please stop by the Next Steps desk because we have a gift waiting for you. We want to show you how can, you can take your next step. We encourage you to download the app. You can uh, connect with us through the week, uh, get information, and those will be on, uh, ongoing for what we will be offering uh, through the fall. Uh, go to the Next Steps desk to learn more about Life Group or D Group. Uh, they're on hiatus, many of them right now, but they will be launching in the fall to so learn more about how you can be on the list to join one uh, upcoming. Uh, we also want to remind you uh, of the uh, funeral uh, for Clara Mae Ryle. Uh, praise God for the long life that God gave her, uh, 100 years old, and uh, now she's with King Jesus. Uh, today, the, uh, Tuesday, they're going to be celebrating her life with a funeral, visitation 8 to 12, and then the funeral is at noon. So uh, if you want to uh, bless the family, Joy Budai, our member, her daughter, you want to go encourage her. We hope that you can be 
part of that. I know some are uh, playing a role in the meal that will follow that. So we're thankful for that. Uh, we also want to be reminded of the opportunity to worship through our giving. That's where we go next. We worship through song, through the word. We want to give. Uh, we give, and in doing so, we do do our Acts 1-8 partners. 2% uh, of our budget goes to partners both here and abroad, and so in supporting that, that supports the work like in London. And so we're thankful that we, in obedience, can give, and God can use it for his kingdom. So let me pray for us. So if you would, let's stand and honor our pastor by singing Happy Birthday, shall we? Happy birthday to you. so much for the opportunity to give and uh, be, give obediently. Thank you for uh, your love in Christ that you gave us. Now, God, as we give, bless uh, our obedience through your gift as a form of offering and worship to you. May you bless the giving to advance the kingdom. And uh, Lord, may you grow in us the opportunity to be more cheerful as we give. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.